all right so in the previous video we went through the entire flow of how push messaging really works so now it's time to implement everything so the subscribe function options object that we have over here expects user visible only and application server key as its two properties let's just set user visible only to true for now now for the application server key i'll use an npm package called web push this package has a command called generate vapid keys so i'll simply run it in my terminal using npx whenever i say vapid keys they essentially mean the application server keys that's because the name of the spec for the application server keys is called vapid it stands for voluntary application server identification for web push so i'll use application server keys and vapid keys interchangeably do not get confused by it they are both the same now just let me copy these two keys inside this file temporarily i'll comment them out now the key that we are supposed to pass in inside the application server key option is the public key the private key is going to go in the backend the public key is what goes inside this option now we cannot directly pass in this key as a string to this option the spec on push api clearly tells us to convert this string using base64 url encoding i honestly don't know why that's the case and i could not find any explanation in the spec for the same but since it is mentioned over there and as you can see here the application server key is expected to be in the form of an array buffer and not a string we will convert it using a custom function you don't have to worry about the actual workings of this function it's just used to encode this base64 string into an array buffer that's it so let me just copy the function here once i have the function here i'll just simply pass in the public key as a parameter to this function now if i go back inside the browser and unregister the service worker then reload the page and click on this button you will see the push subscription that we are console logging over here if i open this up you will find the endpoint and some other options inside the subscription now i need to save this subscription on the backend for this we will be creating an api called save subscription we have not yet gotten to that part but let's just assume for now that we already have the api so inside our project i'll create a function inside which we'll make a post request we'll use the native fetch api to make the call and at the end we'll return the response promise so let me just create a function called save subscription i'll just use the fetch api and inside here i'll pass in localhost 3000 and save subscription so this is the local backend server that we'll host when we create the node application and the save subscription is the api endpoint i also need to pass in a certain set of options the method is going to be post headers this is going to be application slash json and the body will have the subscription and at the end i'll just return the response now that we have this function ready inside the activate event listener at the very end i'll call this function and i'll log the response that we get so let me just get the response i'll pass in the subscription and let me just console log the response instead now let's quickly build our server application as well we'll be using express to do so so inside this directory i'll create a folder and i'll call it server inside this folder let me just run npm in it so it's going to create a node module and once it's done i'll install express let me just set all the default parameters and if you open the folder you'll find the package.json file now npm install express and i also need cores so let's install cores as well the reason why i'll need cores is because the front end and the back end will be on two different ports so we'll have to use cores in order for it to work so let me just create a server file and inside this file i'll just add some boilerplate code
so i have all my imports here express cars then i also have set a port for this application so it's going to be 3000 i'm using the course middleware and also the express.json middleware i'm using this because i have to parse incoming requests with json payloads there's a post request that we just added inside our service worker file so i'll need to parse the request body which is why i'll need express.json and i have this dummy endpoint pointing to the root url so when i go on localhost 3000 i'll see the hello world response just to check and then i'll run the server using app.listen so let me just run this server i'll be using nodemon so if i go to localhost 3000 yeah i get hello world so now let's create the first endpoint which is save subscription all we need to do here is to get the subscription from the request body and store it in a database i'm not using a proper database here because that's not really relevant for this tutorial so instead i'll just push it inside an array you can think of this array as a temporary database inside this endpoint let me just create it first so it's going to be a post request and not a get request and the name of the endpoint is save subscription inside this endpoint i'll just push the subscription that's present inside the request body into the database and respond with a success message so we'll need to create a database first i'll just call it sub database and inside the endpoint controller i'll just push the subscription to the database and the subscription is part of the request body let's just return a success message you can make this implementation more robust by having a legit database along with some error handling but i don't want to drag this anymore so i'll just keep it simple now we need to send a push message to the push service from this backend to do this manually there are a lot of things that we need to take care of firstly the post request to the service will have to follow the web push protocol private key must be attached to the header of the api request the data that we send as part of the push message needs to be encrypted and specific headers need to be added so that the browser can decrypt the message correctly also it's difficult to debug if something goes wrong when sending a push message as if things were already not complicated enough so instead we'll just use a library that does all of this for us let's make it less complicated for once so I'll be using the same library that we used to create the application server keys. The name of the library was web push. Let me just install it inside this node module. I'll import it at the very top here. Let's call it web push. Right after this, I'll call the set vapid details function. The function takes in three arguments. So let me just use web push and call the set vapid details function the first argument is a mail to string which will either be a url or an email address the reason we attach this is because if a web push service needs to get in touch with the sender then they have some information that will enable them to reach out so for now i'll just use my email address then the second and the third arguments are the public and the private key respectively so i'll just copy it from the service worker file Actually, I'll create a constant variable at the top here and from the variable, I'll just use the API keys. One will be public key and the other one is going to be private key. So here I can simply pass API keys dot public key and API keys not private key. On invocation of this function, it will set the global rapid keys to the keys that we have provided here. So next time when we make a call to the send notification function which is the function that is used to send the push message it will automatically attach the keys in the call wherever required finally we'll create one more endpoint that will be used to send the notification so right below save subscription i'll create one more endpoint and this is going to be a get request i'll call it send notification we'll use the web push library and inside the library we have the send notification function this essentially takes three arguments the first one is the subscription for which we want to send the notification 
so we'll just get the first subscription that we have saved in our database so i'll use sub database zero the second argument is the payload that you wish to send as part of the push message let me just set it to hello world for now and the third one is an optional options object we'll skip it for now after this i'll send back a success response so let me just attach response.json and inside here let's have a status of success and a message now if i save this and go back to the browser let me unregister the service worker actually before even doing that i'll have to run this app i'll unregister the service worker reload the page and then click on enable notification you should ideally get a console log message saying subscription saved yeah you can see here which means our save subscription api worked and we now have the user subscription instance stored in the backend database now if you open the send notification api endpoint on a different tab let me just open it here so i'll inspect and go to the network tab and just redirect this to send notification yeah you get the message here saying that message sent to the push service which means our api was successfully executed you can see the network request here as well so basically the api call is getting validated on the push service which means our backend logic works so why are we not getting any notifications that's because there's one thing left on the client on the front end that we have not yet added so the service worker just like the activate event can also listen for a push event this event is triggered whenever a push message is delivered from the push service to the service worker or the browser so all we need to do here is listen for the push event and when we get an event we'll send a notification so inside the service worker file at the bottom i'll attach a event listener for the push event i'll use the service worker registration and the show notification method on this registration it takes in two arguments the first one is going to be the title of the notification i'll just have woohoo as the title and there's an options object as the second parameter so i'll just set the body of the notification block so there will be a title and there will be some extra text which will basically be the body of the notification let's just get the text that we sent from the back end and copy it here so we get it inside e.data.text yeah this should work so let me save this now i'll go back actually before even going there i'll have to reset everything because the subscription that we have saved inside the database will now become stale once we reset this so we'll have to reset the backend server let me run it once again and now let me go back to the client i'll unregister the service worker i'll reset the application i click on enable notification i got the message saying subscription has been saved now if i go back and try to send this request again yeah you can see here that we get the notification with the title woohoo and the message hello world that is being sent from the backend now even if i close this application so this is the front end application for which we are getting the notification i'll close this application and i'll try to make the request again you see that we still get the notification that is because the service worker is running in the background and making a request to the send notification endpoint will still trigger it because service worker is not dependent on the application to be open in your browser as long as the browser is open the service worker is going to send the notification and with that we are done with sending push notifications using a service worker i know this was a bit longer than expected but i've tried to cover almost everything that's essential to implement a basic push notification setup Make sure to rewatch these videos if you do not understand something. 
it took me a while to understand exactly how web push protocol works so yeah do rewatch it if you're stuck anywhere the code is available in a github repository which i'll link in the description if you have any other doubts or suggestions do let me know in the comments and yeah i'll see you in the next one